Okay, so shalom. Uh, I'm going to talk a bit about my history, my research, how I got here. It's not a successful story about finding all that information like Jenny or Denise yet. I hope soon it will be. But I will show you the clues I have for believing I come from a Jewish background. And this gives me like, tells me I'm not crazy when, for doing all this trip. Uh, who am I? I I'll say where I come from. I'm the son of Samuel del Corso Roman, Elizabeth Westerman. Those are my grandparents in Spain and in Holland. There you see uh, to my grandparents and my surnames in Holland and Spain. Uh, my story and research. Well, uh, what I know and what I suspect is that from my father's side, we come from a conversion Muslim family. From my mother's side, I believe there's pretty much uh, uh, proofs to say that uh, there's Jewish assimilated families, but from Naskenaz uh, background. How I got here, I had a long uh, relationship with Judaism. First uh, there I was with uh, René and Jack there in Alicante when I was six. My two violin teachers were uh, Jewish. Uh, I started learning Hebrew, the Aleph Bet, with Abraham Salzman, that was an Israeli. And I came many times to Israel. I was in Kibbutzes de Eliyahu. And uh, I started doing my research like five, six years ago. I didn't know about uh, Casa Shalom. I didn't know this institute was not here then. And I didn't know uh, about Jenny. But uh, now that I know, I have a lot of um, clues on how to do, do this much better. I really hope to be here tomorrow. So where do I start? I start with my father's passion, with the big research that my mother's cousin did. And my mother's older sister that worked here many years in Hadassah and Karem, meeting here some Westermans. She did uh, some research 25 years ago with a private investigator. I have over 3,000 pages. I have no smoking gun like Jenny has. But uh, now I stopped. I, I'm doing a pause. And I'm trying to summarize everything and structurize it, because if not, I'll get lost on it. So why do I do this? I do this because I need to understand what's going on. I do it for the rest of my family, the ones who are interested in it, the ones who don't want to know anything about it, the ones who doesn't care, for others in the same path, and Besat Hashem, when I get married and have children, for them to know who I am. So where did I did my research? Those are uh, some places where I've looked. So I'll start briefly, uh, quickly, Holland. It's, the, it's not a, the theme of this uh, Congress, but... That's my opa Cornelis. He hid from the Nazis in the Holocaust. And uh, this is my family tree. So I uh, focused on the maternal lines of my grandparents. And what I did, as I couldn't find anyone Jewish, I looked for the surnames. Could I find in any place that there is uh, Jewish people with the same surnames in Holland? I did find some, like in Yad Vashem and other places. These are Dutch, uh, Jewish Dutch gravestones with uh, people with names that I find also in my family tree. Like interesting, like Brun, Kahn, Levin, Koenen. And the one of Westerman is in England, but uh, the rest are in Holland. So at the end, I did a report of uh, all the maternal lines. Like this is like this. The starting and the end of my maternal, direct maternal line. My mother is Elizabeth Westerman. And I get, go up to Angie van der Rote and um, that uh, Westerman uh, uh, gravestone on the right is here in Etziona. And the uh, Mordechai uh, Rote, uh, it's in the Harasei team in the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem. It was a rabbi from the 19th century here in, in Israel. Didn't go much uh, longer than that, but I'll go now to Sepharad. Sepharad, I don't have a long uh, family tree. I hope to get over it with the help of Jenny. <laughs> and here are some of my surnames. I got all the civil records I could. And I asked the family members. I got all the pictures I could, all the stories. So I collected hundreds of books. Now they're here in the library for everyone to use. And uh, I found in uh, many records the same people with the same surname. For example, this Roman, they said it's uh, Jewish origin. Uh, Del Coso says that uh, Jews from the Balkans that have Del Coso means they came from Aragon. Coso was the Jewish quarter of, the, of many cities. These are all very interesting. The Inquisition 
uh, files that they, where you can learn about the history of each one of these people. That is really incredible. So where did my family come? Is there any Jewish uh, history in those towns? Well, mainly from Valdepeñas and Alhambra. They were under the Inquisition um, headquarters of Ciudad Real first and later from Toledo. You don't find it in many books. You find it, for example, in this Atlas of Jewish History. Uh, Alhambra and Valdepeñas there were almost connected by Arcañada Real. For, and I'll talk about Valdepeñas, that although no many people know about it, it has still two uh, synagogues standing and the House of the Rabbi, which is now the Municipal Museum. And um, this is Valdepeñas, for example, the street of Del Coso, the street of the Green Cross. I don't know if you know that the Green Cross was taken in procession the day before there was an auto de fe. And in many towns all over Spain, you find the street of the Cruz Verde and you have the Cruz Verde. Anyway, that's the... The, to the two synagogues on the left, and down you can see next to the synagogue the house of the rabbi that probably was also the Bet Midrash. There is three or four families there that they know they come from conversos uh, and they don't speak much about it, but one is a family of the pharmacists that are called Santa Maria. They always held the pharmacy in, in Valdepeñas. You have the Leon family of the groceries and you have the Mejias that they were doctors or they were lawyers and accountants. So these are references in books. My grandfather, my grandfather, Jose Maria, he was an orphan from his mother's side when he was 12. His, my grandmother's, his future wife, family, adopted him and his brother. And um, his family profession that he learned from his uncles, his father, was a saddle maker, the one who would work the leather for the animals. We know that's a, a very Jewish uh, way, kind of uh, profession in Spain. Surnames, I don't know much about him, uh, I suspect, but I cannot prove anything. And that's him with my father and myself. Okay, my grandmother. My grandmother, Maria Roman Chaparro. Here we have something. We know that their family in uh, Valdepeñas in Alhambra, they would give nicknames to all the family. In Spain, everybody is called either Joseph or Maria. So they would nickname either families or either individuals. Their family was known as Aleluyas and Levites, Levitas. And they had some traditions in her mother's family, like wash the meat with salt, and all the families will bath on Fridays, and they will light candles on Fridays, but for the memory of the deceased people. They didn't say anything about Shabbat. And uh, two years ago, I went uh, to this town and to the old uh, uh, people's home to see if they remember the Tia Ciprian and Ruperta and my grandmother, uh, and uh, why did they call them Aleluyas and Levitas? And I got them to get to the town hall and sign this paper stating that they were called Aleluyas because they used to sing songs, especially psalms, in weddings and burials, and Levites because they said they were descendants of Levi. So, uh, other proofs, well, uh, in the last hundred years, the family uh, had uh, especially names from the Tanakh. My great-grandfather, my grandmother's uh, father, was nicknamed Shimshon, but the children of my grandmother are called Shmuel, Daniel, Joseph, uh, and Esther, and uh, their grandchildren, you see Ruth, but you can say that that's because they converted to Protestantism, but they especially chose names from the, from the Tanakh. They were buried outside of the, of the main uh, cemetery where people that suicide or there's a Muslim also buried next to them. And uh, without crosses, very important that they were buried without crosses. There's a funny story that once they ordered a pine coffin that should be without uh, a cross and when they found out that it had a cross, they wouldn't bury the, the family member with it, so the police had to come because the ones who buried the coffin didn't want to remove the cross from the... the anyway, there was a lot of intermarriage between the family, and there's a story of Uncle Domingo, the uncle of my grandmother, that uh, he was engaged, but he died before he got married, and he asked his fiancée to marry his brother, Antonio, because that way everything would stay in the family. Uh, the town of Alhambra is called by other people from other towns, uh, a town from uh, Cousins and Simpleton, because they intermarried between Cousins. Uh, my grandmother's uh, family were knew how to read and write. That's uh, special at that time in that area. And uh, there, were a bit, there were many people in the family blonde with green eyes. I'll talk about that later. But in the middle, you see a picture of my grandmother with the homeschool she did at uh, her house. Um, 
minutes. Sorry. She was given a prize by the town hall for being a, a woman of failure. Where in the synagogue? It's uh, by chance, but it's amazing. So, DNA. Uh, I did also some DNA tests when I found about myself uh, that said 5% Jewish, Askenaz, uh, Middle Eastern. I said, okay, let's do my father's full maternal line and my mother's brother so I could have both of his lines with family tree DNA, which has the biggest um, database of Jewish uh, uh, people. So I find that I have the closest genetic cousins would be, for example, Eliezer Lazari here from Dimona, a third cousin which is Cohen Beaton from Morocco. I still don't know how we're connected, but I hope one day to find. Taco Cohen, Robert Baruch, and for example, Gordon Rubinstein, whose grandfather was Menachem Nahum Dreib from Bologna. <laughs> the big surprise was the mitochondrial, uh, that's the mother's line of my father, that means my grandmother. It's from Alup Group K. Not that common in Spain, but uh, the biggest population that has this Alup Group is the Ashkenazi Jews. Very strange. I would have thought my family would be Sephardic, staying in Spain for so many years. Maybe I would say, I know that many Ashkenazi come, came from the 14th century to Spain. I don't know. So, uh, La Sukot, uh, the two daughters of my grandmother, who maybe, who I think there is a chance they could be halakhliki Jewish, came for the first time to Israel. With This is a picture in the Slichot at the Kotel before Yom Kippur. And the family is awakening to this fact. Some people, like my grandmother's brother, doesn't want to know anything about it. He's very angry that we are uncovering all this. But other people in the family, like my cousins, uh, are very interested in it, and who knows? So why am I here? Well, I think this is my people, this is my country, and this is my story. I just want to say a couple of things before I, I leave you. It's, um, as you see, this research is totally amateur. I, I hope to, to do it better. Uh, it's very important that this is done now because in a globalizing world, my children won't be able to ask my uh, parents what were the family traditions. Now, yes, because of this research, but people are losing their family's history, their family's traditions. And uh, I found that here in Israel, many people think that the conversion problem is just 1492. Jews decided to stay in Spain to... to and not to lose their possession, and it's not true. The, actually, this, the Jews uh, were expelled from Spain. One of the excuses, at least given by the Catholic kings, is because they were a bad influence for the conversos. So I, I put here some dates of mass conversions in the peninsula. And uh, once you were converted either to Christianity or to Islam, there was no going back. There was death penalty. And it wasn't something that you had a choice. You can live or convert. They would gather you in a, in a plaza, and they would sprinkle on you holy water. And that's it. You're a Christian from now on. And you're not allowed to Judaize or <coughs> anything like that. And uh, I would say that uh, it's very interesting the history of uh, how conversors that escaped Spain went to Holland and the problems that happened over there. And it's, I think it's, um, it's uh, something to take into account and that uh, places like this are very important to help people in my, in my uh, story to, to find their roots and to, to know who they are. That's all.